We are Sorted, a group of mates who have your back when it comes to all things food. From cooking battles to gadget reviews Man, it's not worth it. and cookbook challenges to a midweek meal packs app. Crack your eggs, bake. We uncover the tools that'll help us all cook and eat smarter. Join our community where everything we do starts with you. Hello, welcome to Fridge Cam. Now today we are stepping into the world of extravagance by sharing some potentially pretentious ingredients with our chef Ben and our very normal Barry. Yeah! Ebers, spin it around. Ta-da! Oh, okay. <gasps> Just from the side, I think I know what this is. This instantly looks like a more accessible version of the Gianduja cake. I'm glad you recognise this because we have tested another product from this company previously. Some may be familiar with the delights of chocolate spread, I think that's all of us, and the endless possibilities it has for toppings and fillings for desserts or even just on toast in the morning. But with the help of Italian brand La Molina, that recipe is suddenly all the more enriched when this Ortavia is involved. Eight layers of milk, dark and white Gianduja chocolate are sandwiched inside the jar. Oh, look at those layers! I'm salivating so much from just one teaspoon. I can barely get the words out. Very rich, sticks to the roof of your mouth, but in a, an amazing way. It was a lot looser than I was expecting. Off the bat, I'm just very excited by it. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I'm a very happy man. What are you going to serve it on for me? We has prepared brioche. Oh! Uh, and then we also have a standard chocolate spread, scoo, and we thought it would be a perfect comparison with our pretentious or not lamolina. So, oh no. There you go, and you paused just long enough to make it into a meme on Instagram. Sublime, it's so good. I'd say the layers are a little bit pointless because once they get onto the toast, I mean, it doesn't really matter as a spread. Normal chocolate spread is also spectacular. How much do you think the Lamolina eight layer chocolate spread is gonna cost you? It's probably about 15, 15 pounds worth. That's probably 25 quid. Slightly more than that, Ben. It's £26.99. pence. Oh, pretty close. So that works out at £5.39 per 100 grams. Is it pretentious? I haven't asked you yet. I'm so used to being on that I side. Yeah. <laughs> it's over-branded, it's over the top. You, it loses its point as I spread. But in that form, pretentious. It doesn't have to be high-end to be delicious. It's premium but perhaps the eight layered bit is the bit that makes it a little bit pretentious. I feel like we usually do yes or no's. Then yeah, it's a little bit pretentious. There we go. Let's move on to product two. <laughs> Ebers, yeah. let's go. Ooh. Yeah, I've got this at home. Oh, fuck. <laughs> this is always the challenge with putting Barry in a pretentious ingredients in video because the chances are he already has <laughs> the ingredients. <laughs> Cavolo Nero Black Kale Pesto. This is the Seggiano Black Kale Pesto. It's a simple blend of extra virgin olive oil, black kale and cashews. It's dark, leafy and hearty. Use it to create wintry roasted vegetables and stews or summery pastas and risottos packed with fresh greens. Alternatively, mix with mayonnaise for a sumptuous dip. Kale, yeah. This uses Cavolo Nero or Tuscan cabbage or dust, dinosaur kale. Uh, which is probably the hottest brassica on the planet right now. So trendy. For me, it's missing a little bit of garlic and some parmesan, because they're two ingredients I would associate with pesto and neither are in this. Also, I would make pesto with pine nuts and this uses cashew. We've made poor man's pesto before with like walnuts and watercress um, because they're more common in the UK and a lot cheaper. So I don't have a problem with that. It's just, for me, that's just a very high quality pesto. Maybe because I'm overthinking it because of what I've read, but it doesn't feel as creamy as a pesto, and that is probably the lack of the parmesan. We've asked James to toss it through some pasta and then also give you some pasta with 
a standard pesto as well. Normal pesto first, is that right? So this is a Bellazou Genovese pesto. So good quality, but a standard pesto. So this is our black kale pesto. Seggiano is the name of the small hilltop village on Monte Amiata in southern Tuscany, where Perry Eagleton and David Harrison have farmed organic olives since 1985. 20 years ago, they started selling uh, their local Olivastra Seggianese extra virgin olive oil and a small selection of wonderful artisan foods from small family food producers. As I'd expect, completely different in flavour because one's basil and one's kale. That's much more floral and fragrant. I think I prefer a traditional pesto. I say I think I prefer, because if I'm honest, I can't tell much difference. <laughs> Do you want to try and take a stab at how much our dinosaur black kale pesto costs? They're going with the trendy black kale. They're appealing to a vegan market. They'll probably put premium on the price. Probably twice as much. Uh, five pounds. So I don't think it could be that much more expensive. If it is, me and Haley are having words. <laughs> Four pound fifty. Well, we paid seven pound ninety-five. So it's close to three times as much. Whatever happens, I'm sure Haley got a fantastic bargain. It's clambering up to three times as much. It is not three times better. But is it pretentious? It's almost the language they use and the way they market it and the niche they're marketing it at that makes it pretentious. Because there's nothing pretentious about pesto, but that is a pretentious pesto. It's not pretentious because it, it's just expensive. Bring on product three. Right then, mate. Spin around. Let's see where we're taking you now. Ooh. Ah. Uh, okay. So natural vanilla paste. So this is the little pod vanilla paste. It's a natural flavouring made from Madagascan bourbon vanilla pods. Each tube is bursting with extracts from at least twenty pods, making it a super ingredient for sponges custards and ice creams. So they say that one teaspoon equals approximately one vanilla pod. I'm already scared about this because I know it's going to be expensive because of how expensive vanilla is. Have a try. It's not as bitter. I don't know what you want to say really. Tastes really, really, really vanilla-y. Good. Definitely got a lot of seeds in it. It's dark in colour. Smells incredible. I've already got the, the scent of vanilla even as you just squeeze it out of the tube. So what if we were to put that in a dish for you and give you a comparison? What we have prepared is some custard which it's gone in. And obviously you don't generally have custard on its own. So James has gone to the extent of making you sticky toffee pudding. Now we're talking. So for comparison we've also made a custard using a Dr. Oetker uh, vanilla seed paste. Uh, that's the kind of thing that you'd easily pick up in most supermarkets. And is also Madagascan. They, they look exactly the same. Oh, I'm living the dream! Don't mind me. Straight away, cheap one. Very strong on flavour when it comes to vanilla. It is very vanilla-y. Mm. Feels like your mood has soured. Because I can't tell any difference. Flavour-wise, it must be really, really subtle. That's yummy. I can tell you that the Little Pod paste is all responsibly sourced. 10% of all online orders go towards community projects in the vanilla growing region of Madagascar. So for me it's all down to the responsibly sourced and what they give back because that is a nice thing. How much do you think the little pod paste cost us? Go by the rule of doubling it and you usually get pretty close. So let's just say eight pounds. You'd pay a couple of quid per pod. If you were to buy them in bulk, which they obviously do, they could probably get down to a pound a pod maybe. And so my head was saying that's going to be 20 quid's worth. Possibly more. 22, because it's a better number, right? Ben, it's £21.99. <laughs> <laughs> Weirdly, that one makes sense on price. That one doesn't. How is that so cheap? So, is that pretentious? No, this is just vanilla paste. I would expect to pay that. Not pretentious. Shall we move on to the next ingredient? Nope, I'm going to finish this first. And that one. We're going to move on to the next ingredient. Spin around! Yay! Oh, that's first in a while that hasn't fit. Yeah. Oh. Eau de toilette. <laughs> Looks more like a toiletry. Condimento balsamico bianco. I think it's in Italian. White balsamic spritz. I think you've added the word spritz, but yes. No, 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 look, see, spritz. So Ben, this is Gotchi's white balsamic condiment. 
It's a classic condiment made by true masters of their art and is crafted using white concentrated grape and white wine vinegar, which are aged in oak barrels. Golden and fruity, used as a replacement for white wine vinegar or lemon juice, it will take your dressings, sauces and marinades to new heights without altering the colour. Oh, that's quite pleasant. <laughs> <laughs> Get past that bit. It's, gets you, doesn't it? But it's actually really nice. It's really nice. Could you do a spray, delay and slay, slay on what? A cheese board. Huh? Can I sit in this chair more often? <laughs> it's good, isn't it? It's good in this chair. <laughs> oh, a double spritz. So, a little bit of cheese and cracker. What's it adding to the cheese experience? In my head, everything, because it makes sense. In practice, it's not, because the spray's so fine, it's almost lost. Walk through. <laughs> <laughs> no doubt, it's a delicious zing. Say that you had a guest or two or three over for dinner. Yeah, that's called a dinner party, Jamie. You pop down the cheese board and you put a little spritz next to it. What's the reaction going to be? I like that it's immersive and it's an experience because people will do it. It looks pretentious, but as soon as you actually kind of realise what it is, it's not at all. Well, that is a spritz. I actually like I'm not sure about the application on a cheese board, but I imagine spritzed onto fish once you've grilled it, instead of a squeezed lemon, or onto a plate of nice ripe tomatoes. I can see that being really nice. So how much do you think that does cost? So in my head, I could do that at home at a reasonable quality for about nine quid. But I reckon, given the video we're in, it's probably twice that. At 18. I wouldn't be surprised if this creeped into like the, the late 20s. £28. I have to say, mate, you weren't far off at all with your first guess. It's £8.95. In that case, that is clever. Good application, super tasty vinegar. I can see the game they could be trying to play. Mm. But thank goodness they haven't. No, it's actually quite innovative. Not pretentious at all. I mean, just rewind a minute or so. You, you said it didn't really add much. For a cheese board, I like the idea of the vinegar. I'm not sure if the spray works, but if I had it on a board, it would be a talking point. Not pretentious. Not pretentious. I think we have one final product for you. All right, Barry, turn around, turn around. Flaked black truffle sea salt. It's the most pretentious of ingredients, because is it necessary? Ebers, you don't have to be a top chef to know that the earthy truffle is a prized culinary delicacy and the fresh, fine flavours that Truffle Hunter gathers are for any gourmet foodie to enjoy. Sourced from all over Europe and produced in handmade batches at the brand's Cotswold base, this chunky sea salt is infused with summer black truffles. And I'll give you a... Oh, flip it out. There's a point when truffle is that strong, it's almost unpleasant. I mean, it's salty, obviously, but there is a real fragrance and I'm, I'm getting it all up in my olfactory. Expect a mineral rich, salty hit, followed by an earthy black truffle flavour. I think they've nailed that. So as fun as it is getting you to taste it by itself, would you... Um... Yes, please. Okay. Because whatever right. you're going to make with that, I'm already excited. James has lovingly gonna be made on? mac and cheese with truffle salt added throughout the cooking process and sprinkled on top. Ooh, it's definitely got a truffle in it. It's delicious and it's umami and it makes me go, that tastes excellent. But it doesn't make me go, that's truffle. So can you think of other places this might work really well? A little bit of steak mm. on a pizza. Some like triple cooked chips that you do that and as a finishing salt, maybe more so. Do you like it? Is it adding to the dish? I really like it. It is adding something, but I don't think in flavour it's adding truffle. But you wouldn't want to add more of that because it's already salty enough. With oil, sometimes you don't want to add any more fat to what you're eating. So sea salt is quite a useful thing just to sprinkle on top. I'm guessing a little goes a long way. And it better do because I'm guessing that's very expensive. Well, how much do you think it is? 14 pounds. It's only 1%, 1 1.4 grams of truffle. So, yeah, 12 pounds. 12 pound 95. Oh, pound off. You would only use it if you want a bit of truffle flavour. Never use it if you just want a bit of seasoning. 
So it kind of like, it will go a very long way. Having now bought it, collectively, and if it was on the side, I'd probably use it quite a lot, but I'm not sure I would buy it. So, is it pretentious? I don't think it's pretentious. It's not cheap. Just because it's truffle, I want to say it's pretentious. But it does what it says in the tin, and it's a good product. Not pretentious. That's Barry, I would pay £13 for a jar of salt. Didn't say I would pay for it, just saying. Five products, some pretentious, some not. Which one was your favourite? I think I actually like the vinegar, um, but I also like to experiment more with the uh, chocolate hazelnut paste. All good though, good batch. My favourite has to be that spray. Um, so comment down below, let us know which, if any of those ingredients, you think are pretentious. And if you find some pretentious ingredients for us to try, comment them too. There's got to be more out there. We've also built the Sorted Club, where you can get tons of foodie inspo using the PAX Midweek Meal app, discover and share restaurant recommendations using the Eat app, listen and contribute to our Feast Your Ears podcast, and send us ideas for new cookbooks you'll receive throughout the year. Check it all out by heading to sorted.club. And now a blooper. But you've bought this brand before, didn't you? Yeah, I've bought that brand loads. Loads. How much did you pay for it? I don't know, I think it's like seven pounds. Oh, <laughs> Yeah. Because it's in a pretentious episode and like compared to a normal jar of pesto, it's like four times the price. And I just sat there on the camera and said, no, it's, not, it's, it's nowhere near as nice as the cheap stuff. Really? And then I, yeah. We're not good for each other. <laughs>